Hello everyone, Ken here back with another video for you. Today I'm talking about what sports analytics really is. Now, as surprising as this may seem, sports analytics is actually a pretty broad field and there are a lot of different types of roles that a sports analytics professional can have. So in this video, I'm going to break down a couple of the different responsibilities, a couple of the different uh, purposes that these people can have in their work. So after the book Moneyball was published, this really shaped how all people in sports analytics were characterized. Basically nerds in the back room, chopping on computers, helping to make decisions based on variables that very few people had thought of relating to the sport. Now with the advent of DFS, the popularity of sports gambling, and the media interest of, you know, in sports and data analytics, there have been new roles that have very different motives. If you enjoy this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. That way you'll be pinged every time I upload a new video on data science or sports analytics. So let's start with the first type of sports analytics professional, which is that money ball guy, where you are a, a person either in an organization, a, a sports team, or you're consulting for a sports team to effectively help them improve their performance. Your main goal here is to help them win more games this season or over the course of the next few seasons. This is generally the type of work that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So there's generally two types of roles within sports teams where you're applying these analytics. The first role is where you're helping coaches make decisions or you're helping players improve their performance. An example of this would be if you're recommending, for example, for a coach to take more three-point shots in a game. You know, that might optimize the decision-making there. Another example of this would be for you, for your analytics to say that a certain player should be uh, practicing hitting off-speed pitches that are low and away. The other type of work that you'd be doing for a sports team is longer term decision making. So this is a lot around player personnel and making sure that you're getting the most value out of your draft picks and your trade decisions. So the holy grail of sports in general is to be able to perfectly evaluate a player for your team and for you to get a good deal for them on the market. So you always effectively wanna win your trades and Teams of analysts are working on really optimizing the decision making around, you know, players moving teams or players getting taken in the draft. So moving on to the second type of sports analytics position, which is becoming increasingly popular, and that is kind of in the DFS or the, the gambling realm. The people that are, instead of trying to improve the probability of winning, you're trying to predict outcomes. So you can work in this field in a couple different ways. You can either work for one of the casinos or one of the sports books where you're trying to optimize the amount of money that your sports book or your casino is winning. You can also work on the other side where you're either providing information to people who are playing these games or you are actually um, you know, creating these models in a portfolio and making money through betting on games or playing these at a very high level. Again, the biggest difference here is how you are using the analytics. What you're doing with DFS and sports gambling is you're usually trying to predict outcomes, what team will win against spreads, and you're trying to create arbitrage opportunities. Now, this is very risky if, if you're trying to you know, bet on sports yourself, but if you are, are really good at it, you can absolutely make money doing this. With the changes to U.S. Uh, gambling regulations, I expect that there will be a large uptick in these types of opportunities over the next couple of years. As individual states legalize gambling and, you know, well, sports gambling and mobile sports gambling, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity to analyze this data and actually to engage in these activities. The third type of sports analytics roles that are out there are with the media. You know, all the time you're seeing uh, increasingly with sports, sportscasters and the production teams are putting up graphics and giving out new information that can help potentially increase the fan enjoyment of the game. You can hear about some of the crazy records that, that Tiger Woods has had over the course of his career, you know, making cuts or something like that, that complements him playing in a tournament this weekend. 
Now, the focus of this is not predictive or to improve the performance of individual players or teams. It is solely for the interest of the fans. So the focus of the sports analytics work here is about telling a good story and making it appealing to the broader audience. This information can be great for growing the game, but I also think that there's a lot of junk stats that they throw out that don't mean anything to anybody. It's just like, oh, this is a cool thing I found. Um, and I am I'm really interested more in statistics or algorithms that are actionable rather than just exploratory. The final type of sports analytics role comes in industry. So there are a lot of companies out there that are using sports data to build products for either fans or for teams. Now, in this case, you would not be working directly for the team, but you'd be working on a product that the team directly uses. So an example of this would be a company out of Chicago where I live called Z Group. They collect and aggregate a lot of different college football recruit data, and they supply that to the colleges themselves so that they can make better informed decisions about who they should present offers to, who they should be looking at, etc. You know, this is a type of product that is really cool to evaluate and analyze. And companies like this get a lot of really unique data. Hopefully this video gives you more information about the types of opportunities there are if you're trying to get in this field. If you know which of these type, you know, types of roles you'd like to have, you can shape your projects to kind of present information in a similar way to what they'd be looking for. I have another video that talks about how to get into sports analytics, and I cover that in a bit more depth there. You can see it linked above. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your sports analytics journey.